King's Glaive, Final Fantasy XV, and Final Fantasy VII Advent Children feature epic battles with giant monsters, magic, high-flying sword fights, high-speed vehicle chases, and overall ridiculous levels of action. Are they really comparable films, though? I've pointed out in previous videos that these movies have big differences from one another in terms of how they communicate information visually. As action movies, King's Glaive and Advent Children make their action scenes a spectacle, but what separates a bad action movie from a good one is how well they communicate why each battle matters. How well do King's Glaive and Advent Children show the characters' locations, goals, and thoughts during a fight? Let's compare the final third of King's Glaive to three scenes it resembles in Advent Children. The final third of King's Glaive features the protagonist Nyx fighting the antagonist General Glocka, the enemy empire Niflheim's demons fighting other monsters, Nyx's friends Libertus and Princess Luna escaping the city of Insomnia, and a parallel scene featuring Niflheim's Chancellor and Emperor. The monsters the demons fight are referred to as the Old Wall, brought to life as a last resort to defend the Kingdom of Lucis from its enemies. In the process, they destroy Lucis's capital, Insomnia. Don't worry, Lucis's future doesn't depend on its citizens' survival. What kind of kingdom needs people? Libertus and Luna escaping from the city has similarities to the final motorcycle chase in Advent Children. In King's Glaive, Libertus must escort Luna out of the city so she can deliver a magical ring to Prince Noctis to save Lucis's future. Their escape is actually pretty uneventful compared to everything else going on in this section of the movie, which is odd considering that Luna and the ring are the only things that matter in it. General Glocka breaks off from his fight with Nyx once to try to stop them, but when a section of missing highway dislodges him, he returns to killing Nyx rather than continuing his pursuit of the most important items in the movie. In Advent Children's Motorcycle Chase, the protagonist, Cloud, must stop the antagonist, Kadaj, from using Genova's cells to reincarnate Cloud's greatest enemy, Sephiroth. Kadaj also has a mostly carefree escape, but that's because his brothers forcefully separate Cloud from him. This whole scene is about Cloud fighting through Lowe's and Yazoo to get to Kadaj, rather than two guys just killing each other because they forgot their purpose for fighting. Actually, Nyx and Glocka do have a reason to fight, but it's not what you think. Glocka says that he wants the ring, but he and Nyx move ever farther away from it, which suggests he has another goal. This final battle actually symbolizes an ethical debate. Is it better to surrender to your enemy to save the people who haven't died yet? Or should you continue fighting for what you believe, no matter the consequences? Glocka wants Lucis to surrender to Niflheim to end the war, while Nyx believes that Niflheim could never rule a just future. Neither of them are wrong, both choices are awful, and either choice could lead to a terrible future. Let's not kid ourselves, Nyx and Glocka are equally terrible people, considering how little they care about the wanton destruction and death surrounding them. And Lucis is just as bad as Niflheim. Lucis's King Regis hoards his son and magical objects behind a wall while forcing his people to fight a losing war to protect them. The final scenes show this blatantly. His own magic kills his own people. Meanwhile, Niflheim murders thousands of civilians whenever it has the chance. In essence, Nyx and Glocka kill each other simply because they have different beliefs. That's right, if someone doesn't believe what you do, just kill them. This battle mirrors the battle between Cloud and Sephiroth in Advent Children. King's Glaive, you can't just use Advent Children physics without setting them up first. Among their differences, though, the characters have clear motivations, and we can even sympathize with one of them. What I want, Cloud, is to sail the darkness of the cosmos with this planet as my vessel. Cloud must save the planet. Simple. Done. Now we can watch the fight without wondering why we should care about two people murdering one another while a city and its inhabitants falls into ruin around them. Actually, no one in this scene dies. 
If Cloud fails, everyone on the planet will likely die. But the battle itself takes place in an abandoned city. Cloud doesn't even kill Sephiroth in the end. I will never be a memory. And when Kadaj reappears, Cloud shows him sympathy. He isn't some psychopath who can murder his colleagues while ignoring the deaths of thousands around him. He can barely handle the memories of two friends who died years ago. Advent Children doesn't present morally gray questions to mull over. But personally, I prefer its message, choose life, to Kingsglaive's morally reprehensible message, kill everyone who disagrees with you, and also your allies. Finally, most of Nyx and Glocka's battle takes place on top of a giant monster battle. Similar to a scene in Advent Children where Cloud and his friends fight the monster Bahamut. The problem with Kingsglaive is that the monsters only add to the visual chaos on screen. Some of the monsters of the old wall look and sound like General Glocka. The monsters on both sides destroy so much with little to no reaction from any of the characters that it all seems pointless. Additionally, Nyx and Glocka's battle takes place on constantly moving settings. Fighting monsters, collapsing buildings, flying airships, falling debris, and racing cars. They can also teleport anywhere within throwing distance at any time. Kingsglaive seems to think that because of this, it doesn't have to show how the characters move from one area to the next. Nyx and Glocka can just appear on top of giant monsters or airships whenever it looks cool. The movie, however, often has to cut to other useless scenes, just so that moving Nyx and Glocka from one place to the next makes some kind of sense. The characters can't jump from a collapsing parking garage and reappear falling from an office building roof. So, let's see what's going on with Libertas and Luna. That's not something you see every day. Nothing. Great. Why are these guys still here? Didn't they say half an hour ago that they were leaving? Why do we need to hear this information again? The battle with Bahamut also contains many fighters, some of which fight on top of the monster. The difference from Kingsglaive is that Advent Children constantly shows the location of the fighters, including the monster, in the scene and in relation to one another. The battle takes place in one area that all looks very similar, but has landmarks that even serve as an element of combat. In the middle of the battle, we briefly cut away to a scene where Kadaj discovers the location of Genova's cells. This scene, however, exists to break up the action and reveal new information, rather than to move all the characters to new locations. When we return, the fight picks up right where it left off. Attacks from the monster also mean something to the characters, especially considering that they're fighting to save themselves and the city. Not only do we know the characters' locations, but also we know their feelings through reaction shots. Overall, Advent Children's fight scenes show everything we need to know in an awesome way. While King's Glaive occasionally displays awesome moments in otherwise visually chaotic settings, both films may appear to be incoherent action fests, but their similarities are only superficial. Beneath the surface, Advent Children uses visual language so masterfully that I find it shocking Square Enix went on to make King's Glaive, a film so inept that it can barely get across that someone is stealing a crystal without multiple characters verbally pointing it out. Comparing Advent Children to King's Glaive is like comparing Toy Story to Food Fight, but if you still don't believe me, go watch them. Watch them back to back. Then come back and tell me what you think. I'll talk at you next time. Shall we take our leave then? The sun will soon set. We need not be here to witness the terrors of the night. I will return to Niflheim. So soon.